2.6 degrees today. Well about zero. Had my uh, had my bowlands out pushing the snow. I wanted to. There was about uh, oh three inches of snow, but it was getting heavier as it was warming up, and I wanted to get it out of the way before it froze up. It's supposed to go down to minus eight Celsius tonight. And so it's working real good that old bowlands. I go down and uh, check the chickens, and I'll show you my uh, heated water bowl. See, I just have a, a path here I stomp down when there's snow. We haven't had a lot of snow this year. This is kind of the first bunch of it that we're, we've had. I was mentioning uh, on an earlier video, I was going to show you the... Uh, the road I plowed this with the bowlands all the way up. It's a long drive. Uh, we need to get the uh, need to get my trailer out for a friend who's going to use the the, uh, the hog hog trailer to take the the pigs off to slaughter. So I had to I kept I wanted to keep this uh, clear for his truck. Didn't wasn't sure how much snow was going to come. So I'm going to go check uh, my heated water ball here, and there's my 60 watts of solar, which you've seen. And uh, just show you real quick here. There's a Shauna Claire looking mischievous as, as I come in the door. Alright, so this mess here is my heated uh, chicken water bowl. What you see there is the black hot water coil. The uh, the top is ice. And it wasn't a real good test though because it doesn't didn't freeze solid because it wasn't very cold last night. Um, as long as it's above say minus five degrees Celsius, this water out of the rivers uh, usually stays liquid. So that's a little hundred watt uh, drink immersion water heater. And then it goes over to this rat's nest of a box which I was showing um, earlier, the various components. Um, it's a b big mess right now. I need to clean it up. This was just a test to see if it would work. I just have it uh, plugged in with uh, clamps right on my uh, 100 amp hour battery. This is my Nautilus. I did a video on it. Uh, 115 amp hour. Uh, Dale Calder this is uh, one you should uh, get. I recommend this. This is really cheap, 140 bucks from Canadian Tire. Last I checked, 115 amp hours, uh, as compared to your 35 amp hour battery. This is a, a wet cell, deep cycle. Um, it's not the ideal thing for solar off grid stuff, but certainly for us who are tinkering, this is uh, well above what most people would get for tinkering with solar, um, and it's worked well. I've had no issues with it. You do, however, need to uh, check the the fluids, and I haven't even checked it yet. I've only had it for like a year, so it's probably time to check the water level, make sure the water level's up, because when it charges, it does vent off some water. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I need to uh, lengthen this cable um, so I can run it right into where that water bowl is there. That's just a rubber water bowl. So I need to run it in there and that'll kind of be my first real test. And uh, what I'll do is I'll... So this guy here, this is the thermostat. If the temperature is below minus 5, um, this guy's going to switch on. And it is working right now, although I didn't set it to... I think it's on... No, it's not on right now, actually. Um... Oh, there it goes. So you can see it flipped on. Uh, the, I didn't have my plug very tight there. Anyways, uh, so if it's below minus 5, that, that guy will turn on and open up. Um, the red LED beside the, uh, the numbers, if that's on, that indicates that the uh, switch is open and, and transferring current. Um, however, the, uh, the DC timer, which I haven't set up for date and time yet, uh, isn't on right now. It's, it's manually switched off. Otherwise, there would be a... A red button there, a red light there. Let's see if I can get it to come on for you there. So I manually turned it on. So this is sending power to the uh, 
immersion hot water coil. You can see the bubbles coming off it. So that guy's heating up, heating up the water. And it did it did clear an area here um, where the ice was. You can see it on my finger. It's big enough that the chickens could get in there and, and drink that water. So that's not too bad. I don't think they'd have a problem burning themselves. There is some exposed metal there, but the ambient uh, temperature of the metal is probably pretty... It probably only lukewarm because the water's cooling it down so much. I do want to try this um, when it's frozen solid and see how long it takes, but uh, it certainly seems to work well. I'll turn that off. Got to put it back to off, the manual off. Anyways, um, it doesn't pull the battery down too much, so I do got solar power coming in. It's not super bright. 12.8 volts, you can see there. Um, by the way, this PWM charge controller, another one for Dale. This was 10 bucks off eBay, and it's a, it's a no-brainer. It just works. All solid state. Um, it's not the top of the line charge controller, but it's been flawless for me. Um, so that's great. So yeah, so I'm going to run that into the uh, chicken coop there. Um, I got to uh, clean up this rat's nest here of wires and make it a more permanent solution. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how I'll do that. I, I still want to do a final test and time to see how long it's going to take to uh, defrost that that bucket of ice. Um, so anyways, I'll have an upcoming video for that one. Alright, so that's the update from the chicken coop. Say goodbye, Sean and Claire's.